Hi and welcome back. Okay, last time we did some clicker questions. It seemed very strange that these algorithms didn't halt on on very simple graphs. And when we looked at this summary of search strategies last time, what was very strange was this column here where everything said halts no, even on finite graphs. So we're going to look at a couple of ways of solving that problem. Okay. The first one's called cycle pruning. So if we have a if we have a cycle from S and we go all the way around here, once we've got to this point here, we know that there's no point in keeping going around this cycle. At this point here, we know that going all the way around here, if we've got to here, we're not going to find a solution where we couldn't have found one if we didn't look there. So if there's a solution that goes down here, for example, right, then we would find that we didn't need to go all the way around the loop and back to there. Okay, so we're never going to get rid of a longer, shortest path. So it's always seems sensible to prune a path that ends in a node already on the path. And we can do that without removing an optimal solution. That's called cycle pruning. So this cycle pruning. So all we're going to do is just here's our generic search algorithm in black and the new parts in red. So we have the, we've removed a path N0 to NK. And we're only going to expand it. We're only going to check if it's a goal and add, the, add its neighbors if the last node is not an element of the set of all the first nodes. Okay, so, so we can have, so we can do this. Um, so that's all we need to do. So all we're going to do here is just check with the last node. If it's not an element, we're going to expand it. Otherwise, we're going to go through the loop again. If there's still something in the front here, we're just going to remove a different path. Okay. And this is still going to find an optimal solution if there is one. Okay. So let's look at cycle pruning and depth first search. In depth first search, checking for cycles could be done in what time? How much time does it take to find it? Well, if you think about this, what happens is there's only ever one set of nodes. There's only one path really we're finding. So in depth first search, we're just maintaining a single path. So we just have a single path and we have these other ones that are sort of subparts of it. So if we do that with just a single path, we can do this element of because there's only one set, we can just store it in, we can just store it in a hash code or we can do it some other thing. Um, but it takes, you know, we can actually do this in linear or in constant time. So this takes constant time. However, for other methods, it turns out that it doesn't. So for other methods, checking for cycles, you actually have to check all the way up because it actually there's, X, there's lots and lots of different sets we have to worry about. For every element we have to do the sets. It turns out you can't do better for the linear time in here. So this seems a sensible thing to do for depth first search. For other methods, maybe it's not so good because it takes extra time. But it's also a bit of work to make in depth first search to make sure you can do it in constant time. You're going to store it efficiently. Um, if you do it naively, it's also going to take linear time. And with cycle pruning, which algorithms halt on finite graphs? So think about that and we'll talk about that in class. Another thing we might want to do is what's called multiple path pruning. Suppose we found a path through this, through this set of nodes at the bottom. And then we find in our search, we find another path that goes to this other node here. So there's no point in looking for this longer path to this node if we've already found a shorter path to the node. So multiple path pruning, what we're going to do is we're going to prune a path to node n that the searcher has already found a path to. Okay, so then we've got a question about what do we need to store? Well, all we need to store is the nodes that we've already expanded. So expanded means we've selected them from the, from the frontier. We've already said they're either their goal or we've, or, we've ex or we've found their neighbors. So we don't need, that's what we need to store. So it turns out lowest cost first with multiple path pruning is Dijkstra's algorithm, which you might have seen before. And it's the same as A star with multiple path pruning and a heuristic function of zero. And with a non-heuristic function of zero, that's still an underestimate, we can do better than that. So we can almost always do better than Dijkstra's algorithm um, if we know extra information. Okay, so I'm sure that, for example, Google Maps uses A star algorithms because they really is, they really can estimate the length from a, a node to a goal node of where you're going. All right, so here's all we need to do and to do this. Now we're gonna have the set of all nodes expanded. That's what we're going to, so again, sorry, again in the black here is our generic search algorithm. And in here we're gonna have, and the red is the new path. 
So we're going to have a set of all nodes that are expanded. And if nk is not an element of the set of all nodes expanded, we're going to add it to it. And then we get a loop. If it is an element, we're just going to go around this loop again. OK, so here's what we can think about in class. How does multiple path pruning compare to cycle pruning? Well, is one more useful than another? Should we do both? Um, or what happens with it? Which search algorithms with multiple path pruning always halt on finite graphs? Oh. What's the time overhead of multiple path pruning? How much extra how much time does it take? What's the space overhead of multiple path pruning? Is it is it better for depth first or breadth first searches? Which one would you use it for? And can multiple path pruning prevent an optimal solution being found? So let's try and answer this last question. So what we're going to think about is maybe the, the second, the subsequent path we found is actually shorter. So what we're going to ask this question is, what if we have a path to node n and the subsequent path to node n has a lower cost than the first node to node n? So that's a problem, right? So what can we do? Where are some things we could do? We could remove all paths from the frontier that use the longer path. So we have all these paths that use the longer path and there's lots in the front, there might be lots in the frontier. We could remove them all and then search again from this lower cost. That's possible to do. It might waste lots of, it might waste lots of effort that we've used before. The second thing we could do is to change, is to try to patch up all of those paths of the frontier to use the lower cost path. So we can change the initial segments of the paths. You know, all the, path, all the paths of the frontier that previously used the longer path, we're going to change it to the shorter path. Well, that looks pretty complicated. The third solution is just to avoid the problem. Let's try and make sure this doesn't happen. Let's make sure that the lower cost path to a node is always expanded first. So we're going to try and look at that. So how can we guarantee that? So let's think about how to do that. We're going to look at it in the context of A star. Suppose the path P to, to node N was selected, but there's a lower cost path to N. Okay, that's, that's, what we're gonna, that's the problem we want to avoid. Now, if there's a lower cost path to node N, then there should be a, a path P prime on the frontier that is the initial path of the part of that. And suppose the path P prime ends at node N prime. And I'm gonna recommend you try and draw this out. I'm not gonna draw it out, but I think you should try and draw this out to work out what's going on. So P was selected before P prime. So what does that mean? That means the cost of P, so because A star search always chooses the node with the lowest um, cost plus heuristic. So that means that the cost of P plus H of N is less than or equal to the cost of P prime plus H of N prime. And now we're going to suppose cost of N prime to N is the actual cost of the path from N prime to N. And, and we know by assumption by what was supposed at the top, that the path to n via p prime has a lower cost to p. So what does that mean? That means the cost of p prime plus this, the cost from n prime to n is less than the cost of p. So now let's rearrange all these things. Let's move the cost of p prime here to the other side. We end up with the cost of p minus the cost of p prime. Well, let's look at this one. Let's do, if we look at this one here, the cost of p minus the cost of p prime we can rearrange this top one and we get h of n minus h of n prime. So the only time this occurs is if the cost of n prime between n and n prime is less than or equal to the cost, the heuristic difference between n and n prime. And we can ensure this doesn't occur if we make sure that the distant difference in costs, in, sorry, the difference in heuristics is always less than or equal to the cost, then this above won't occur and multiple path pruning will always find the shortest path. So that's called a monotone restriction. So it turns out that it works even if we only consider arcs. So the heuristic function H satisfies the monotone restriction. It's called monotone because things have to keep increasing. If the difference in the heuristic functions is less than or equal to the actual cost for every arc M and N. So it's sort of useful to think about how you might draw that. Um, if H satisfies the monotone restriction, A star with multiple path pruning always finds a least, part, part, a least cost path to goal, and that's effectively what we've just proved. Um, and this is strengthening of the admissibility criterion that we saw before. So A star um, 
with just the admissibility criteria without multiple path pruning always finds the least path cost path to a goal. But if you want to include multiple path pruning, then you we need the monotone restriction if we want to guarantee that we're going to use multiple path pruning and always find the least cost path to a goal. So invariably when we use A star, we almost always use the multiple path pruning. Um, and we'll see why when we discuss it in class. But so, but so when we talk about A star, we almost always mean that A star with multiple path pruning. Okay, so let's so let's talk about this in class 